Hey guys, Liz Burns here, and I am so excited. I cannot wait to share with you. We are here with Grammy Award nominee, Stellar Award winner, Dove Award winner, uh, and she's also my cousin. Don't yes. tell anyone. Martha <laughs> Minizzi, yay! We're so glad yay. you're here. Thanks for being here with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Martha, how long have you been a Minizzi? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Forever. No, 26 years. 26 years. So you may not know this, LizBurns.com, but I was Liz Munizzi for many more years mm -hmm. before I became a Burns. Martha had one of the distinctions of being one of the first, I'd say, blonde members of yes, our family. Yes, yes, non-Italian. Yeah. When Definitely non-Italian. When you came in, was that scary? Was that... It was, and only because my husband tried to, like, scare me. <laughs> now, my family, you have to kiss everybody. You had, I'm like, what? And then as I came in, I realized they're the most fun people and yeah. the sweetest people on the planet, so yeah. there's nothing to be afraid of. No, nothing to be afraid of, not really. <laughs> no, um, so for the most what, part. So then, uh, this is something I can empathize with because I was a Munizzi for 22 years. What would you say is the worst, in your professional career, the worst mispronunciation oh, Lord. of Munizzi? As they, in, please welcome to the stage. I mean, what have you heard? Some bad uh, things? Well, Menudo, Menunzi, but I think the worst was Liza Minnelli. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody <laughs> called me Liza Minnelli. It's not even not even close. Relatively close. <laughs> I, I like Menudo though, kind of like the Spanish Menudo, boy band. Menudo, Manunzi. My, I I don't understand people, but they can't say it. And so. you say Munizzi. Munizzi. I feel like the. I mean, I remember being told that the proper Italian with the you know correct syllables and everything was Munizzi. Right. But I said Munizzi. That was our right. Uh, and yeah, we got. Well, that. I always use Frankie Muniz. He kind of helped us yes. out a little bit. When people can't ex they can't pronounce it. I'll say you know like, like Frankie Muniz E. <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. And this is exactly why, because literally it's a struggle. If you're out there and your last name is Smith, you don't understand. You don't understand. The struggles we've been no. through. Okay. <laughs> you don't understand. There's a lot of good things about being in a big Italian family too. But there is. There's a lot of great It's been things. hard. It's been a struggle. A lot of great food. Of that I mean, you have to kind of, you know, measure yeah. things yes. out. But the food definitely makes up for a lot. almost anything else. <laughs> um, we're here at your offices, your workspace, uh -huh. and I'm just looking around kind of enjoying and seeing all the neat Things. This is almost like a, the house that Praise and Worship built. <laughs> Think about it. It is. That it was really sort of is. where you kind of came into the music scene. Yeah. But maybe some people, you know, watching, they're new to church or they haven't even heard these terms. How would you describe for someone who's like brand new to it? What is Praise and Worship? You know, that's really such a great question because over the years I thought I had it figured out and then I'm finding it articulated mm. on so many different levels. Yeah. But it really, praise to me is just thanking God for what He's done, what yeah. He's doing, and what He's going to do. Yeah. It's just exalting Him. It's praising Him. I think it's the outer court area, yeah. you know, where we just cheer Him on and we just remember how awesome He is and how fabulous and how wonderful and we get... It, we just our faith gets stirred up and built when we praise him, yeah. and then when we worship him, we we go into where he is, mm. where he dwells, and wow. he comes and sits with us, and there's a communion that happens, wow. and it's an intimacy, and it's just incredible. I can't imagine my life without the, just the the benefit of praise and worship. Mm. That's in my interesting life. you say that because I was going to ask you to follow that up. You know, that's what it means to the world, but to you personally, it has yeah. to mean so many different things because not only has it sort of become a career and, and forged that way, but I mean, in your own life and in your own walk with God, what has praise and worship meant? It's been a, a therapy mm. in a lot of areas. It's been a, a, a way to, a fire escape, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. I like that. It's been uh, healing. It's been, it's been everything and you know even as you get older and your kids start getting older and you go through different stages of your life and you hit a wall that you never thought you'd hit and you have you know it just things change and yeah. your life changes to know that that's the staple that that's what i can always go back to mm. you know when I, sometimes it's just silly but sometimes you have a headache that that medicine just won't touch mm. you know what i'm saying sometimes you and then you can, you can take that advil for the 20th time and think this time it's going to fit and then it just won't touch it. I don't yeah. know why I'm saying that, but I'm just saying there's things in your life that, you know, maybe a friend, a relationship, or even a secular song that usually makes you feel better just runs out. Right. It just runs out of juice. Right. But God's presence never does. Mm. So for me, every time, whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm going through, if I need something from the Lord, if I need um, just to, to feel okay or to yeah. feel confident again or to feel peace, rest. Always, always, always yeah. I can take my medicine and it works every time. It's amazing that you can say that because how long have you been in praise and worship? I mean, yeah. <laughs> You know what? Probably since I was 16 years old. So, yeah. Yeah. And I remember those times of refreshing. And I remember the first time at Calvary Assembly when I was 
at a, a Don Moen came. Don Moen. Don Moen, and he started singing a song, just him on the piano. And wow. I mean, I just, the, I, I felt the presence of God like I've never felt before. Mm. And I said, that's it. Yes. I want this. But is and, there that yeah. temptation when it's something that's sort of also become your career? Is there ever that temptation or that, um, you know, that, oh, this is the rut or this is the same thing over and over again? Because we've seen that in yeah. brothers and sisters in the church who have, you know, it's, it's changed over from, you know, yeah. praise and worship to them becoming that performance. I mean, how do you balance that? You know, it is such an easy, it's just a slippery slope, yeah. so they say. Um, it really is. And But for me and a lot of my peers in gospel music, we know, and we've all had this conversation, so many of us, that if we don't feel impacted mm. by our worship, by our music, if yes. we're not feeling the presence of God when we're writing it, when we're D developing it, no one else will. And it starts here. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not, I mean, I love writing songs and I love just doing things just out of the craft of writing. Yeah. But when it comes to picking songs for my so for my albums and yes. for things, they've got to bless people. They've got to mm. be a message from heaven and articulating who God is. That's where I'm at right now. I want to articulate and describe for myself and for others who God is and why He is so worthy of our praise. Yeah. You know, so that's where I'm at right now. And awesome. to me, that never runs out. There's creativity there that never has an end. Wow. You know, when you're writing for other genres, other things, you just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, you have good moments. It's like a formula. There's yeah. a formula, definitely a formula. But yeah. in praise and worship, just the, just finding the inspiration, there, it's endless. Yeah. That's so kind of like awesome. the Word, isn't it? We read the Word over and over again. We read the same passage. Yeah. But then one day... Oh, you know, I've read this a thousand times and suddenly I'm reading something in the Word and it's brand new yeah, to me. Yeah, it's rhema. It's God, revelation. God is alive. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, why he's so different uh, than any other, you know, uh, religion or sector in the world that has tried yep. to be. Because this is a living God that yeah. we are with and a, a live thing. So when you enter into worship every time, you're getting something new. I love that. And his Word is alive. Yes. His Word is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. Love so it. there's something powerful about praise because it's our weapon. Yes. You know, not to sound super spiritual, but but it really is. It's a way yes. out. Yes. It's a way up. It's a yes. way through. And miss. And most people miss it. They yes. they look for every other way out. Right. I've just learned, man. If I'm having some you know difficult days, I know I have to discipline myself. Yes. Get up in the morning. The first hour, two hours, I put myself in a little incubator and like, don't talk to me. <laughs> don't look at me. The zone. <laughs> yeah. I have before I'm really ready for the day because yeah. when God is trying to download something in my life, mm. the enemy it seems like he's just on a rampage to steal it. So yeah. I have to say, I got to spend the, especially those first hour, two hours yes. in the morning is so key. It makes all the difference. It does. It? it does. And I'll, yeah. if I got to watch Joyce Meyer, I'll put on some worship <laughs> music, whatever it takes yes. to just create that sanctuary yes. in the morning so that I can finish yeah. my day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've seen and, you know, followed you all throughout the years, but what is it that's really exciting? to you right now what are you working on now that's just got you really pumped up well what I'm working on is exciting but what's the most exciting thing for me is Danielle my daughter yes she has a new CD um, it's it's so awesome count it all, count, no it's called know you more my favorite song is count it all joy that's why I keep saying <laughs> I that. Get the correct info when I you're looking on iTunes sure. yeah it's called know you more yeah. and it is just for her very first CD that she worked so hard on and just at the beginning it just seemed like it was just everything was coming together and then in the middle of it it just is like a fight uh, but that's just the way that it is you yes. have to keep fighting and then um it to have it completed and people yeah. are so blessed by it how does that it. feel as a mom it's you know what honestly honestly it's the dream of my life yeah. is to see my kids carry on and, and to do what god's called them to do so when i'm actually seeing it you know, I told her the other day, I said, you don't have any compre you can't comprehend how it feels mm. for me to know. I mean, I'll, when you were eight years old, I dreamed it. When you mm. were 10, when you were 11, wow. I could see it. When you were 16, I envisioned it. And then now to see it happening is the most overwhelming. It's, it's, it's more fulfilling than anything I've ever done for myself. Wow. It really is. Does it's it feel really in is. some ways sort of like a, almost like a passing of the torch to that generation saying, yes. you know, we've been doing this and I've been leading this and now, but now you guys need this. It's, you know? and, and I, it is. And for me, my biggest weight that I carry now is to make sure, are they ready? Yes. You know, are they anointed? Are they tapping into this next season and making yes. sure that, that they are, you know, whatever I can do to help mentor them and yes. to help develop them and actually put them in the right places where they can have those that downloaded in their spirit is important. Yes, absolutely. Tell us about the Viva La Woman conference that you just had. How was that? That was seeing awesome. it all over Twitter, all over Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. It looks so exciting. It was exciting. Okay. And we just actually it was um, in August 
And so it was awesome. We had uh, Amy Dockery, who from she's from Dallas Covenant Church. She was the favorite. Wow. Uh, my sister Mary Leslie was yes. the other favorite. We had Martha's twin sister. My twin sister, yeah. yes. <laughs> she was awesome. We had somebody great. Cindy Thomas came and yes. spoke. Um, uh, Gabby Douglas, Olympic gold medalist, wow. and her mom Natalie Hawkins came and they shared their story. And it was really, it was really more of an outreach. Yeah. We wanted to reach out to our city even more, and it was just exciting. Danielle did a lot of the worship. Something you're going to do again? Oh yeah, yes. we'll do it annually. So every year, right. every year we'll have. So we're excited about the guests that we're having next year. We're still okay. anchoring everybody, so we'll let you know soon. Yes, who's coming. So we'll have to keep our ears to the yes. ground for that. Good stuff. Yeah, and I, you know, just meeting with Martha today, and I was thinking about her life and how it's been such a beautiful example of worship and praise. And we want to encourage you guys. You guys are watching this at home right now. Praise and worship, she said, is a weapon. And that may have sounded like, what, what does she mean by that? But sometimes we are praising and worshiping and we really feel good and we're on that top of that mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the raise or you got the boy or, you know, whatever it is. But then, you know, there's the days when it didn't go so good. You've right. been through pain. I've been mm -hmm. through pain. And uh, we want to sit here and be an example to you and say it works. You know, mm -hmm. On those days when you don't feel it is probably the day you most need it. You need you it. Say? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And today, if that's you, go for it. You know, start to praise and see. I mean, we, we challenge you like a little challenge or, or your money back, but we don't even need it because we're saying, you know, That's when right. you start. So for your little tip bid today, just to know that if you try to, you're in a place, you feel like you're kind of stuck, try some praise and worship yep. and see, it might take you to that next level. We're here with Martha. You can always find anything you need on Martha at MarthaMunizzi.com. Go to iTunes, look up the music, it, do yourself a favor. It's brought me through some hard times and Danielle's new album also on iTunes. So yes. Danielle Munizzi know you more look for that i think it'd be kind of fun i don't know end our time we'll be saying something together we should this is you know a, a hero and an inspiration to all of us who've come up in worship loving these songs so it'd be an honor so let's check it out let's do it <laughs> so here we are and this is an honor and a privilege for me getting to sing with my cousin <laughs> and a hero in worship for all of us we're gonna sing one of my favorites if that's okay because of who you are i would love it one of my favorites awesome. all right we're gonna sing together sing with us <laughs> Because of who you are, I give you glory. Yeah, yeah. And because of who you are, I give you praise. Mm -hmm. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, you're my provider, Jehovah Nisi. Oh, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, you are my prince of peace. And I worship you because of who you are. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hey. You sound fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. You sound fabulous. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.